Welcome to Islands and Old Parish Church online worship service. It's good to have you join with me wherever you have gathered as we worship God from the comfort of our homes. But don't forget that although being away from our church building is weary and tiresome, there is hope. And the hope is that no matter what we experience, we will get through this and we will get through this together. For this is a worshipping community that is a place of grace and not perfection and all are welcome. And remember that it won't be long now before we can begin to open our doors when it is safe to do so, to gather for worship once again. So on this third Sunday of Easter, let us still our hearts and minds as we prepare ourselves to worship God. So let us pray. Holy risen one, wherever we gather this day, we come as we are, questioning, wondering, hoping. You wait for us, and when we are ready, we open our eyes to your teachings and what it means to be a child of faith. Loving God, each of us have our own stories to tell, our own journey through life. So we come to you now in prayer knowing that you know us, that you have been with us on this journey, especially as we've travelled through these uncertain times. We are reassured that you are our companion on this journey together and that it brings great comfort to all of us during this pandemic. We are reminded that your story is our story. Your journey through life, death and resurrection is also our journey. That you have promised all who follow you the promise of everlasting life as long as we're open to a new way of being. We are reminded that the Holy Spirit is our companion on the way. So as we journey on through life, we have you with us and within us, knowing that we are never out of your grasp, that you will never leave us, is comforting at this time. So loving God, wherever we have gathered to worship you, hear our small voice within each of us as we come today seeking your reassurance and companionship once more. And let us join with each other, near and far, and say together with one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading today is read for us by the very reverend Dr. Martin Fair, moderator of the General Assembly. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you were walking? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. 
In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they entered the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Amen. The two characters in our Gospel reading today, Cleopas and his friend, are facing a wide variety of emotions. They have just witnessed and been part of a life-changing experience that will remain with them for the rest of their lives. The horrific death of their friend and loved one, Jesus Christ. And the road to Emmaus, although it is a place only seven miles from Jerusalem, it will be for me a story, a place about loss of direction, loss of hope and doubt that is then turned to a strong and joyful faith through their encounter and our encounter with Jesus Christ. And when we lose hope, when our way of life has changed, the road to a maze is very much like the journey we are on especially at the moment during this pandemic. For here we have two people whose friend has just died, who were feeling bewildered and rootless, their faith faltering and gone. Two downhearted people who feel alone, dejected, afraid and have lost hope. They've missed their friend so much. Their hopes have been dashed because Jesus of Nazareth has been crucified. And they had just witnessed the bitter aftermath of that crucifixion. And their personal relationship with Jesus at that time was in many ways closed. Their great adventure of following him was over. And they were going home. They were going home to a place called Emmaus. And Emmaus is a place where we go at such times as this. Emmaus is a place where we go to forget. It is the comfort zone we can retreat into as we attempt to piece together the shattered fragments of our own stories into something that makes sense. Yet we are reminded in Luke's Gospel these words. When the stranger speaks to these two people saying, Why are you looking for the living among dead? He is not here but he has been resurrected. And to be honest, I find that verse rather challenging. It's okay to say something along those lines, keep your chin up and so on, yet if you are feeling the loss of loved ones, the loss of identity, it's not as easy as switching on the lights or look for the living amongst the dead. Many of our folk within our congregation and within our parish 
are travelling along the Emmaus Road. They are feeling dejected. Their stories, their plans, their ambitions have been shattered and they are struggling. So the only place to be is to walk the Emmaus way. And from a biblical standpoint, Jesus had to experience the crucifixion and the two people had to witness that event in order for God's big story to be acted out. I often say that through death comes resurrection. And maybe, just maybe, the lockdown of churches within the Church of Scotland nationally and locally had to be closed in order for God's story to be finally acted out. Maybe it was the only way that many of us would let go of the comfort of our church walls to appreciate what we truly have. To enable us to take a step forward in faith and recognise that the kingdom of God is calling each one of us to fulfil his commission to go and share the great news. But I'm not naive in believing that this has been an easy move Far from it. All of us, one way or another, are grieving this past year. For we're all seeking to find a new identity. Moving out from our comfort zone. Trying to figure out what now. Especially when the lockdown restrictions are beginning to be lifted. And once again we are being challenged in how to be part of a new way of living with new rules to follow once again. And it would be so easy to stay cocooned in the security of our homes. And yet we still have to live, meet with family and friends. However, as people of faith, we should remember that we are not alone in these moments of doubts and fears. We must never forget that there is a stranger who falls beside us on the uncertain road ahead to surprise us with hope. There is something that makes all the difference in the world. There is someone who makes all the difference in our world. And the good news we celebrate is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Even if we are unable to fully appreciate its aliveness. And when we look at Cleopas and his friend, I guess in many ways that sums us up, sums up their disillusionment as it says in verse 21. We were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. Their dreams, their dreams that have been kept alive by the teachings of Israel for over 500 years, that this Messiah would redeem Israel from its deeper exile. Their hopes, their dreams were shattered on that Good Friday. Their new life was about to start when tomorrow came, only for them, for them tomorrow came in the form of Good Friday. Death to them had slammed shut the doors of their lives and the coronavirus had slammed shut the doors of our lives and the lives of this church. But when you think about it, The resurrection story is not a happy ending that can be tacked onto the Jesus story. Without this final chapter, the Holy Week journey, the Good Friday, the tomb, the pain, the suffering, the humiliation, the isolation, the abandonment, the fear, without all of this, the gospel of Jesus Christ is no gospel at all. The resurrection of Jesus has to be the ultimate postmodern event. It opened up to Cleopas and his friend and to us a completely new way of viewing the world. A resurrection view of reality is now about to break in and open everything up for those two people on the road to Emmaus. From the tomb on that Easter Sunday until his ascension, Jesus spent the next 40 days in Bible teaching. That was his priority. And never let us forget that the key to understanding both Old and New Testament is Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ is the hub of the Bible. Jesus Christ is the hub of our hearts and lives. And when Jesus broke bread, the two people on that road, their eyes were opened and they recognised Jesus for the first time. And those who met him in this way never forgot that moment. And though they were called to, to walk in faith and not by sight again and again, most likely in broken bread and poured out wine, they meet Jesus Christ afresh and they know his presence as the living Christ. We are beginning to emerge from a traumatic situation which has altered our identity, our way of living and how we practice our faith. At the moment, we cannot gather together collectively to worship God, although in the coming weeks, this will change. And throughout this pandemic, the work of the church, this worshiping community, has done its best to keep working our faith. And it has put our faith into action. From the ministry of soup to online Zoom meetings, the care and compassion of funerals and bereaved families have been at the forefront of this worshipping community that has lost many of our own folk. Yet all of us have been able to be the church of Jesus Christ if we wanted to be. Coming from a spiritual aspect, we have all had the opportunity to pray fervently, to dwell in the scriptures, to be still and listen to God, for that is the main ethos of a worshipping community. But it's been your choice. No one has forced you. But it's your choice to journey with Christ. No one can say that they have been forgotten. For it takes all of us, all of us, to be the church. And like the two on the road to Emmaus, once they opened their eyes to Jesus, they too were free to make choices. And once we trust fully in the Lord Jesus Christ, we too will be set free to become the movement that Christ called us to be on that first Easter Sunday. When Jesus revealed himself to those two pilgrims, they responded and they changed their lives. That encounter changed their mood. Their hope had now been restored. Seeing Jesus Christ once again caused them to change direction, to go back to Jerusalem and tell others. They went back and told others. Whatever moment in our lives that we are experiencing, whether it be joyful or sorrowful, lonely, frustrated or encouraged, or even faltering, we can be assured that we have a constant companion just like those two pilgrims. The constant companion is, of course, our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. So if we continue to trust in him, we will find food for the journey and companionship along the road. For on that road to Emmaus, that is where we will find our hope through the, the risen Jesus Christ, who is a constant companion. Amen. Here at this time and in this place, here where we speak our sadness without fear of sentimentality, we are grateful for faith that sustains us, hope that encourages us, and love that surrounds us. When the labour of life comes to an end and duty is done and complete, may we remain steadfast, 
secure in the strength of our Lord, who made heaven and earth and gives us rest. So let us pray. Almighty God, whose presence comforts and inspires, whose people of faith set us a shining example to follow, whose love and mercy surround us to the ends of our days, we offer now our gratitude for your servant Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, for gifts of courage, duty and selfless service, receive our thanks. For concise speech and thought, receive our thanks. For his passion for this diverse world and all its creatures, we give you thanks. For his unswerving commitment to country and commonwealth, we give you thanks. We thank you also for the role he played as husband, father, grandfather and great-grandfather, for the way in which he took the lead and challenged and set goals and encouraged all life to be lived to the full. We bless you for his many years of marriage to our Queen, for his steadfast support through her long reign and for the bonds of affection that sustained them through each stage of life. We praise you for his enduring faith, unafraid to ask questions, but loyal in devotion to the church. For his work with the young, especially through the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, which still enriches the lives of many in this country and across the world. We give you thanks for his many links with the land and people of Scotland at Deeside in the University of Edinburgh and across the many charitable causes to which he lent support. We give you our heartfelt thanks. We remember at this time all who will mourn his loss, especially those who knew him best and loved him most. We hold before you in our prayers Her Majesty the Queen, the passing of a stalwart support, wise counsellor and loyal friend will be hard to bear, the passing of an understanding mind and compassionate heart will be hard to bear. Give her strength and comfort, give her peace and acceptance, that through the passage of time, bright memories and laughter will sustain her and remain as testament to a long life of duty and love, dedicated to care of family and service to country. But we also remember at this time those we have lost, and especially in the parish of Uddingston and within the worshipping family family of Uddingston Old Parish Church from the beginning of 2021. And so now we remember Betty Williamson, Ian Aitken, Jeanette Skews, John Boyd, Alice McLaren, Margaret Knox, Margaret Pugh, Marjorie Grant, Marjorie Kirkwood, Morag Kirk, Valerie D, James McLucas. Hold those who are mourning the loved ones in your comforting arms and bring to them strength and comfort and the peace you offer to all. To you we offer our thanks and praise this day as we seek strength and direction for the way ahead in our own lives. Loving God, hear our prayers. Amen. 
Well, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our time is just about over. And can I again thank you for joining with me wherever you have gathered as we worship God this day. Can I also remember to keep an eye on our social media pages and our website for upcoming news about the changes that will be occurring at the old parish. Uh, we're just waiting on new confirmation from central offices of 121 and the COVID working group to, to give us the guidance of how we can proceed to begin reopening our church building. So positive news. As I said today, there is hope and there is hope in this darkness. So just again, have patience and keep in touch either again through social media pages, through our website or give me a phone. Um, I'm always at the end of the phone. So until we meet again, my brothers and sisters in Christ, remember, stay safe, stay well, stay connected with each other and with God and go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>
cast our crown.